far from its native roots of New England. The Morgan Horse, America's first breed, makes its home in the beautiful rolling hills of San Martin, California. Through four generations and spanning over 40 years, one family began with purebred and partbred Morgans that were originally used for ranch and trail work and has made a significant contribution in promoting and propagating the Morgan legacy. Their first show horse, Shawala Ted, was purchased in 1985 and was going to live a retired life of leisure. But once he came into their lives, an incredible journey began that continues to this day, as many other Morgan horse owners will testify to. When combining Morgans with a bunch of horse-crazy granddaughters, the outcome was both predictable and inevitable. Once the grandkids started showing, the next step was to start breeding show horses of their own. Over the next 40 years, the Bum and Carlino family have built one of the most successful Morgan horse breeding and showing programs in North America. Welcome to Silver Creek Stables in San Martin, California. The tradition of breeding and producing exceptional Morgan horses spans four generations and has always been a family endeavor, starting with Susan Carlino, her mother, her four daughters, Jessica, Genevieve, Elise, and Anna. And now the fourth generation making their show ring debut in lead line classes. Perhaps one of the best kept secrets is the personable nature and exceptional versatility of the Morgan horse. Susan discusses their introduction to Morgans and the special horses that started them on a lifelong journey. When we were kids, we always had ranch horses and there was always, they were always a mixture, but the ones that always stood out were the Morgans. And um, when my mom decided to uh, look into it, pursue that breed a little bit, because they were so charming, they were so good with the kids, they were so good in everything that we asked them to do, that uh, she got interested in a gelding that was for sale that was going to be just another uh, ranch horse. But he was a retired show horse, and he was not going to be done being a show horse and that sort of fired the whole thing uh, he started uh, he lit the fire under her she let lit the fire under us kids and then the grandkids too and that's when she decided to pursue that a little bit they had uh, they had a facility in San Jose that was conducive to doing a little bit more riding a little bit more fun activities with the kids so they they moved there and uh, from there, it bloomed into building a really nice facility and getting a trainer and buying uh, the first real nice Morgan Show horses.
when the kids were little, we have five kids, and when they were little, we we wanted to do continue doing horses because I loved horses and they were just always going to be a part of my life. And the budget didn't stretch far enough to get each kid one horse and we were lucky enough to find a very nice gelding that suited our family tremendously and he lived in our backyard for many years and we did everything with him we would uh, the, the kids would ride him there'd be four of them at a time bareback and a halter going past my kitchen window and then there'd be none huh, what happened to everybody and then he'd go back and get them and pick them up and they get back on but he went to horse shows and we would do a horse show where one one of the kids would ride him hunt and one would ride him western and then they would do the sit -a buck and then they would sleep in the stall with him. He, what a nice guy and, and that is what Morgans are. We would go camping and we would have, I'd have five kids plus couple extras and all the paraphernalia that goes along with them and the horse trailer in the horse and there'd be motorcycles. We were just loaded and he was just part of the family, just like one of the dogs. And he'd go camping with us, he'd go trail riding, he'd pack one of the kids around, he'd pack five of the kids around, it didn't matter. And then the next weekend, he'd go to a horse show. They, they're just wonderful horses. And any, even any one of these horses in the barn here would do the same thing. Their minds are so wonderful. In 1998, Silver Creek moved from San Jose to the five-acre farm in San Martin where each spring, a small number of very selectively bred Morgan foals are born. These foals are the product of many years of planning and patience. Their foundation mare is world champion Fletcher Music Lee, who won at the World Championship Show in Oklahoma City in the in-hand division in harness and under saddle. Those accolades made her famous, but it was her Morgan type, heart, beauty, soundness of mind and body, extreme intelligence, and most importantly, charisma that made her the perfect candidate to lead the breathing program into greatness. Fletcher Music Lee produced the beautiful and many-time champion GLB Bell Pepper, world champion Flair for Music, world champion GLB Bell of the Ball, world champion GLB Perfect Harmony, reserve world champion GLB Moonlight Sonata, and reserve national champion GLB Copper Tone Girl. So one of the things that Musical.ly passed on to her offspring was just phenomenal. Was Well, there were many things that she passed on. And uh, was first of all, it was her beauty. Her beauty and her very correct Morgan type and style. Uh, her charisma, her athleticism, but probably if I was gonna list those in order, what I would put on the, in the top would be her charisma. And she's passed that on to almost all of her offspring, is that their charisma, their incredible heart, their incredible will to uh, just do what you want. And when they go out in that show ring, they know that it's all about them. That same charisma, that same wonderful vibrance that lights up the show ring, and they hold true to the Morgan type, and that is so very important. It's a cool blend. Morgans are a personal breed with an innate ability to communicate with their owners, as Jessica recalls. What I find alluring about horses and Morgans in general is that they can really read your personality and what you're thinking and they really relate well to that. I remember when my mom had a heart attack and I was 17 and I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh my gosh, my mom is having a heart attack. I went into, my st into the stall with my horse, uh, Stella, and I just sat there against the wall and she knew exactly what to do. She's usually the pushiest mare on the face of the planet. And she was like, oh, you're sad? Like, I'm gonna comfort you. And knew exactly what I was thinking and I didn't even have to say anything to her. And I think that's really special to have a friend that you don't have to say anything to and she knows exactly what you're thinking. The Morgan is an excellent youth horse and Jessica discusses what a horse can bring to a teenager's life and what a horse can teach you. I have to say that Attraction to Morgans and why I think people my age 
should get into activity and just riding horses in general is it really teaches you self-discipline. It teaches you a lot of just, you've got to do it. You've got to keep pushing yourself to reach that goal. You've got to push yourself a little bit further with your horse who is a part of your, it's a team. It's a team bond that you have to accomplish so you can win a blue ribbon or just know that, oh my goodness, I actually picked up the right canter lead. It's just little accomplishments like that and it really boosts your self-esteem. But it's more of just an accomplishment and disciplined in general. I know it helped me a lot in high school and my mom going, you know, you need to finish your homework or you can't go to a horse show or you need to clean your room. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to go do that because I want to go see my horse. I want to go ride and I want to go push myself a little bit further and see what I can do. And some things that I never knew I could do, I did. A fond memory that really sparked my interest in why I really wanted to stay into horses, I have to say, was winning Reserve World with my mare, who was just such a powerhouse. And I would show her when I was a junior exhibitor, 17 years old, and I had a judge came up to me and she said, you're too bold for junior exhibitor. I was like, what does that mean? I'm too bold for junior exhibitor. Doesn't that mean I should win? She's like, no, you need to be mannerly. And so after that horse show, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to show this judge that I can be mannerly and that my horse can be bold, but definitely under control for a junior exhibitor. So we, we went to World in 2008, and we won Reserve World against 25 other kids my age and horses that have won World Championships in the Open Division and the Amateur Division. And I won with my mare, who has never won a world title, and that really just gave me that self-confidence, being the youngest, that confidence, I can do something, I can really compete and I can be, I can play with the big guys who are already of one who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with their outfits and with their horses and I beat them and it was a good feeling. Jessica has accomplished much in a short period of time and talks about her near-term and long-term goals and objectives. Big hug. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to be when I grow up, per se, I know I'm 20 and I should be grown up, but I want to, I've set the goal for myself that I just started learning how to ride saddle seat, and I've always ridden saddle seat, but I never really perfected the art of it. And this year, I'm riding um, a four-time world champion English pleasure horse, and I'm so excited to show her and hopefully go to Oklahoma and win an amateur world title. If I always wanted to do that, I'd be like, I won amateur world title. How cool is that? And the amateurs can be, you know, from 18 to 65. So it is quite the accomplishment for me, a kid, to beat all of those other people with a horse with her second year under saddle. And my other goals just with school and my own personal goals, I have to say, is just graduating college. That's always been something I've wanted to do. And since I've gotten a little bit further in school, I'm like, you know what? I don't care if I graduate with just an AA degree or a bachelor's degree. I want to tell my kids one day that I graduated college, and I'm going to do that right after I win a world title. <laughs>
The Morgan Horse, the pride and product of America, is an exceptional and versatile breed which can compete effortlessly and athletically in the show ring and then return home to be a trail horse and a best friend. Without a doubt, the Morgan Horse is the man for all seasons. He is the horse that will do anything. If you want to, uh, if you want to do dressage, you can do dressage. If you want to go trail riding, they do it all. That's what is so nice about the Morgan horses is that they'll do it all. So instead of buying one horse to jump and one to do dressage and one to do western, you get one Morgan and they'll do this, the, all of it, and they'll do it with big smiles on their faces. And they, in their personality is so connected to people that you'll love every minute of it. If you had a if you had a Morgan, you'd love every minute of it because they're um, they're not machines. They are they're not human beings either. But they're they're pretty close. They're pretty intuitive. They're pretty smart. Sometimes they're smarter than a lot of people that I know. <laughs> but. Uh, they are, they're a great choice. They easily, out of all the breeds, and I love all the breeds, love them all. Boy, I'll tell you, the kids are always going, Mama, let's get an Arab. Mama, let's get a Frisian. Mama, let's get this, that. Okay, well, you know, these Morgans just fit the bill in every aspect. Why stray outside? The Morgans are the best. The family has learned much about breeding and producing champions, and although their primary goal might be to breed an exceptional park horse, they could be just as excited about breeding a great dressage, driving, or trail horse. To this family, a good Morgan is a good Morgan. I think anybody who breeds Morgan horses is going to tell you that it's an adventure and it's always a learning experience and no matter how long you're doing it you're always learning so when we first started breeding and figuring out what our the crosses were going to be it was always an adventure and you did your homework and you tried to make sure that you got it lined up and did it right and that you got what you wanted we've been very lucky our goal is to continue breeding really nice Morgans that are good performers. Of course, everybody is looking for the park horse or the English pleasure horse. That's the ultimate. But more what we'd like to see is a these fine Morgan horses doing what they like to do. So if they want to be a park horse, that's great. We'd love to see them be a park horse. But if they want to be a hunt horse, they can be a hunt horse. If they want to be a nice Western horse, they can be a nice, if they want to be if they want to just pack kids around on the weekends giving lessons, that is just wonderful. They can do that and have a good time doing it. Breeding good Morgans that are true to the Morgan type, that have hearts of gold, that have the charisma to do everything that they do well. That is what we'd like to see. Uh, keep learning, always learning, probably till the day I die, we'll keep learning. There's always something new, there's always a new bloodline out there, there's always something new to, to look at and to explore. We'll probably do lots of fun things. Always at the top of the, the list here is we're looking for the English horse, the park horse, but I love a good western horse and I love a good dressage horse and I love a good carriage horse. It doesn't matter, a good Morgan is a good Morgan. The team at Silver Creek Stables has established a firm and significant foundation of success in the Morgan Horse world. The objective has been, and will continue to be, to breed great Morgan horses and to see the next generation of riders, drivers, and great Morgans trot into the winner's circle and on to the pages of Morgan history. anyone interested in learning more about this exceptional breed, Silver Creek 
is an incredible resource of knowledge and proven success with four generations eager to help you find your forever Morgan. The year was 1789, well over two centuries ago in Springfield, Massachusetts. His origins were unknown. Perhaps he came from lines of Welsh Cobb, Arabian, Thoroughbred, or Frisian. No one knew for certain. What was known was that he was a stout colt, a handsome colt. And so he was given the name Figure. No one could have known that this unassuming cult would become the cornerstone and foundation of one of the most outstanding and versatile breeds found today. As the cult developed, he was described as being small, about 14 hands tall, but possessed deep muscling in his quarters and shoulders, straight, clean legs, expressive eyes, a well-arched neck, and clean throat latch and short pricked ears. When Figure was a two-year-old, he was given to a colonial school teacher named Justin Morgan in exchange for settlement of a debt. Justin Morgan probably intended to make a quick sale of this colt, but as he put him to work, his ability and reputation quickly started to grow, eventually becoming legendary in his feats. The story of this magnificent cult and his owner became popularized when Walt Disney produced the film Justin Morgan Had a Horse. And for many Morgan owners today, this film about the life and accomplishments of the Justin Morgan horse was their introduction and beginning of their love affair with the Morgan breed. Though not as large as the colonial workhorses and not as tall and long-legged as the racehorses of his day, Figure would consistently outperform all of them. But as legendary as his personal feats were in his time, he became especially recognized and known for his prepotency, the ability to pass his genetic qualities on to his get. So much so that he became the foundation stallion for the breed which bore his owner's name. It was his courage, substance, kind heart, broad versatility, and prepotency that established his permanent place in history. Over its 200-year history, many Morgan breeders wanted a taller, leaner, more refined Morgan to reflect an increasing need for pleasure horses with more flash to their gait, and less need for a horse originally used for utility work. That perceived need led to outcrossing with horses that produced a taller, leaner Morgan horse, longer in the back, with a more refined neckline, but still retaining the versatility that they were known for. 
The results of these breeding selections resulted in what we might refer to as a contemporary Morgan, along with the Morgans of today, which reflect the original conformation and type of the original Justin Morgan horse. It's important to note that whichever conformation and look one prefers within Morgan families, the inherent versatility, courage, and heart of the foundation stallion figure has been successfully passed through two centuries of breeding Morgan horses. In the early 1900s, a gentleman by the name of Fullerton Phillips, by all accounts, spent a small fortune to develop a program based on traditional Morgan bloodlines. In 1922, tragedy struck when most of his herd was killed by a freak lightning storm. His program never recovered, and Fullerton Phillips died about five years after that. Fortunately, when his remaining horses were dispersed, a gentleman by the name of Robert Lippett Knight acquired two stallions and four mares from the Fullerton estate. Moving these horses to his Green Mountain Stock Farm, now the Three Stallion Inn, located in Randolph, Vermont, Robert Lippett Knight would become a steward of the original Morgan Blood lines for the next quarter century. For the next 25 years, Knight bred horses with a mission to preserve the characteristics that made the Morgan legendary. In 1952, Knight dispersed a lifetime of breed preservation. But having remorse over this auction, he spent the next few years buying back many of the horses sold at the dispersal. When Knight died just 10 years after the original sale of his horses, the culmination of his career of preservation was once again sold to the public. Robert Lippett Knight's preservation of the old bloodlines did not go unnoticed. And in the early 1970s, a group of concerned Morgan owners and breeders established an organization known as the Lippitt Club, taking the breeding prefix and middle name of the gentleman who had contributed so much to the preservation of the original Morgan. One of the icons of the Morgan breed, an exceptional clinician and trainer, Aton Beth Halakmi, once said in an interview that the attribute that he values most in a horse is heart. One of the things as a lipid owner, competitor, and breeder that I found is that these horses have an abundance of heart. All of the horses you will see here are grand national and world champions, having competed at the highest levels of competition and been successful at it. They've proven their ability in the highest forms of competition, in reigning, dressage, jumping, driving, endurance and competitive trail, combined driving events, all disciplines which require stamina, athletic ability, and a solid mind. This episode isn't to showcase anybody's particular horses, bloodlines, or breeding program. Our goal here today is to show that the Lippet Morgan is one of the most capable athletic sport horses available. Anyone looking for an athletic, competitive, capable sport horse should really put the Lippet Morgan on their radar screen. To have one horse in your barn that's an exceptional performer speaks volumes about that particular horse. When you have several stellar performers in your stable, I think it speaks volumes about the bloodlines. John and Sherry Rivers of River Riders Ranch have successfully campaigned several Lippet Morgans to the highest honors competition bestows, both Morgan and open reigning competitions. In reigning competition, normally thought to be the domain of the quarter horse, the Lippet Morgan has captured innumerable Grand National and World Championship titles in this rigorous competition. <laughs> Reigning competition is an exacting skill requiring discipline, precision, agility, athletic ability, and most of all, heart. 
all highly desirable and exceptionally valuable attributes of performance sport horses. Moral Hill Mozart, River Riders Romeo, River Riders Renegade, River Riders Rapture, have all graced the electronic marquees many times over and have caused reigning people everywhere to sit up and take notice of these capable athletes. Whether tight competition or the entertaining freestyle reigning performances that excite people of all ages, Lippets have made a profound impact in reigning competition. Most of the successful breeders will tell you that greatness begets greatness, and the Lippet Morgan is an exceptional example of this. Probably one of the most successful competitive lines is that of a horse named Stillwater Indigo, who was owned and loved by Lester Welch in New England. They contributed much to the promotion of Lippets and could be seen at many horse shows, exhibitions, and just plain fun activities. From Stillwater Indigo came a whole line of successful horses, the next being Meredith Billy Rubin, an exceptional stallion who's captured the hearts and minds of all who have come to know him, and who in the early 90s captured a reserve Grand National carriage driving title uh, in Oklahoma City. This is Meredith Billy Rubin, an entry of the Madrona Morgans of Colbain, Washington. Meredith Billy Rubin has been the sire of many exceptional and capable horses today, but two of his get have already captured several grand national titles. Okan Storm King has excelled at Western disciplines and dressage and took top honors at the Grand Nationals recently in dressage. What is special about the Lipid Morgan is that it is a distinct horse with no known outcrosses to other breeds, resulting in a Morgan that has the highest percentage of the original Morgan blood today. A purebred Lipid is a horse which can trace the sire and the dam back to the original Justin Morgan horse and his offspring without any known outcrosses. There are only about 1,500 purebred Lippet Morgans left today. They're practically an endangered species. But they are out there, they are available, and people can find them. I think the reason more people don't know about the Lippet Morgan is that the stewards of the breed today tend to be focused more on preservation than on the performance attributes of the Morgan. They breed the horse to preserve these bloodlines well into the future and for the next generation. Consequently, you don't see many Lippet Morgans at A-rated horse shows or upper-level competitions. There's not a lot of visibility or even awareness of the special attributes of the Lippet Morgans, especially among people who are looking for talented athletic sport horses. But that fact takes nothing away from the exceptional ability of the Lippet Morgan, which has been proven out in the highest and most difficult levels of Morgan and equine competitions across many disciplines. Another offspring of this line is Madrona Rubicon, an exceptional athlete who has already captured five Grand National titles and three combined driving division titles. The Lippet Morgan is an exceptional horse, athletic, kind, versatile, full of heart and willingness to please. All of the attributes that made the Foundation Stallion figure legendary to this day. 
The Lippitt Morgan has shown an excellence in a variety of athletic competitions and performance activities, making it one of the most suitable sport horses available, and certainly one worthy of consideration when someone is looking for an athletic sport horse, one that can make things happen. Their stamina, endurance, and willingness to please are legendary. And the Lippitt Morgan just may be the consummate sport horse for people seeking a companion and partner to get the job done. Owners will tell you that you cannot wear one out, that their stamina and especially their heart are beyond compare. Lippitt Morgans exude confidence at an early age. Young foals exhibit a trust and reassurance about themselves not seen in many breeds. They are trusting and enjoy the company of people. They tend to think and rationalize things rather than react to events around them. Those who own and compete with Lippitt Morgans will tell you about their superb confidence and attitude in performance venues. I think another great stallion of the past was a Lippitt Morgan stallion by the name of John Ethan Ashbrook, who was owned and loved by Kathy and Peter White of New York. John Ethan Ashbrook wasn't shown a great deal, but he certainly had the heart and attitude to be successful. His get certainly have inherited that from him. One of John Ethan Ashbrook's get is a beautiful mare by the name of TFM Joan de Arc, an exceptional mare. In her first year at the Grand Nationals, we had her entered into a very competitive World Championship timed obstacles class. There were 16 in the class. The incumbent reigning champion was a Morgan horse by the name of Roadshow Huck Finn, who was an exceptional athlete and carriage driving horse. Roadshow Huck Finn could get into an extended trot and just cover ground and never break a stride. He was just unbelievable as a carriage driving obstacle horse. In the course, there were a set of four cones set up in a, a stair step, and you had two choices. You could either try and slice it diagonally, which everybody was looking at, or run it in a pair of figure eights, which was longer and more time consuming. As we came out of the sixth gate and approached the stair step, I just had a split second to decide whether we'd run it the long way or whether we had the ability to, to slice it down the diagonal and articulate around a cone that was set there to trip up. And as we came out of there, I saw Joni's ears go forward as she looked at it, and I knew immediately she knew exactly what I wanted to do. And Joni just sliced that thing perfectly and articulated around the, the cone that was set there to trip you up. And the, crowd gasped and uh, we wound up winning that uh, class by uh, beating Roadshow Huck Finn by an incredible 11 seconds on the timed obstacles course and that was Joni's first world championship win against some very uh, stiff competition. We then arranged to lease Joni's full sister, TFM Serenata from Canada, from Bob and Marjorie Thomas, uh, another horse sired by John Ethan Ashbrook. We brought her to Texas and put her in training and uh, started working her and Joni as a pair, and uh, they, they just clicked from day one. In the World Championship timed obstacles class at the Grand Nationals, it came down to Charles Smith driving an exceptional Morgan pair for Victoria Bennett. Charlie Smith and this Morgan pair were an exceptional combination and they just glided through uh, the course in a clean round making it very difficult for us. But Joni and Sarah are an exceptionally athletic and agile pair and they took routes through the cones that were kind of unimaginable given the layout of it and how tight they were and they managed to slice 35 seconds off the prevailing time to win the World Championship Timed Obstacles Paris class that year. Throughout Joni and Serenata's career, they've managed to capture five world championship titles in pairs driving, six grand national titles, and a reserve world championship. 
But this isn't about enumerating uh, world championship and grand national titles. The point here is that the Lippets are exceptionally capable horses that can compete and win at the highest levels of competition. Lippet Morgans have been an exceptional choice for youth as well who are interested in competing at higher levels. Amanda Mastine will have captured innumerable awards and honors in the Northeast region in training level dressage competitions and in their first year at the Grand Nationals they captured the World Champion Dressage High Point Training Level Junior Exhibitor Award. They make an exceptional horse for youth who are interested in getting into competitive venues. In competitive trail rides and endurance rides, Ashmore O'Billy Allen has been an exceptional horse. In his first three-day, 100-mile competitive ride with owner Rhonda Backshelder, he captured the Grand Champion Top Honors and also captured the Grand Champion title in the Kobe 50-mile competitive trail ride. And they captured similar honors in other grueling competitions. In combined driving, these horses excel. They have such incredible stamina and endurance that at the end of the marathon phase, they're ready to run it again while other breeds are, are typically spent at the end of it. They get their head into the game. Anybody who's competed with them in combined driving will tell you that. They understand the hazards, they understand the objective of it, and there's very much a team player as the rest of your crew. Lippet Morgans have also done well on the other side of our planet. Carenza Apollo, owned by Rick and Joanne Hayes, of Hameron Park Morgan Stud in Australia has captured high point and grand champion titles in the ridden purebred and working stock horse divisions. And he's captured additional honors in reining, versatility, dressage, western pleasure, working cow horse, and more. This is yet another example of a lippet that does many things exceptionally well. Another example of excellence in lippets is a stallion named Shamrock Seville, an exceptional carriage driving horse uh, owned by Bob and Marjorie Thomas in Canada. At the Grand Nationals a few years back in the Grand National Finals class on Saturday evening, Shamrock Seville captured the reserve Grand National title in the always competitive Salute to America Finals class. Shamrock Seville. But it was really an even greater night for the Thomases as Joni and Sarah, products of their breeding program, captured top honors for the evening. Lippet Morgans captured both the Grand National and Reserve Grand National Finals titles that evening. For more information about the Lippet Morgan abilities and excellence as a competitive sport horse and companion, contact one of the organizations whose members are contributing to the preservation of this special bloodline. To own a Lippet Morgan is to own a piece of a legend.
Far from its native roots in New England, in the beautiful rolling hills of Southern California, just north of Los Angeles, in the peaceful countryside of Agua Dulce, the Morgan Horse makes its home. For more than two decades, Joy Weber has practiced her profession as a horse trainer and over that time has helped hundreds of clients reach both their potential and their dreams with their horses. Welcome to Weber Training Stables in Agua Dulce, California. Surrounded by the rolling mountains of Agua Dulce, Weber Training Stables is a warm and welcoming place where people of all ages and experience levels can bring their horse to improve upon both their horse's skill set and their own or come to find their special horse and lifelong companion. At Weber Stables, their primary focus is on the Morgan horse, both for training and for breeding. WTS specializes in diversity, training horses of all breeds, disciplines and levels, whether it's starting young horses, re-educating grown ones, solving problems, or even tuning up Old Faithful and giving that old horse a few new tricks. They offer training for a wide range of disciplines, including show, pleasure, competition, performance, vaulting, trail, endurance, speed, and more. The Morgan Horse is America's first breed, going back well over 200 years ago. It has a profound impact and effect on those who have come to know and love this breed. Not only is it known for its exceptional versatility, but its kind and willing temperament. To own and know a Morgan horse results in an unbridled passion for this breed, as you'll see. Probably what sets WTS apart from other training facilities is their philosophy on training, both horses and riders. Each horse and rider is a unique set of issues and circumstances to deal with, so there is no boilerplate method that will deal with all situations. Every horse and client is evaluated to determine what issue they need to work on, and a customized program is developed for each horse and rider. 
They manage an environment where the goal is to produce a horse that responds to requests trustingly, confidently, and without resistance because it understands what's expected of it and a rider who understands how to get the best performance and most enjoyment out of each riding experience. But perhaps one of the strongest attributes of WTS is the personality of the operation and the fact that clients and their horses are not simply clients, but family. Sharing, caring, and cooperation are basic tenets of the stable, and everyone there adheres to rule number one and rule number two. The best thing they find out here is that we're really easy going. Everybody's really supportive of everybody else. Um, the number one rule is can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Rule number two is don't forget rule number one. The thing I strive for in training is that I want basically my owners to be able to ride their horse as well as I do. People should be able to enjoy their horse and ride it the way that we ride it. So um, I would say I put a lot of stress on making sure that people know why the horse is trained this way, how it's trained this way, and how they can get the same results that I get when I ride the horse. Whether they're out on the trail, in the show ring, no matter where they're at. While some trainers prefer to train, manage, and show the horses they're working with, Joy very much wants to integrate the owner into the process. So the end result is that the owner can get as much from their horse as Joy can. Her goal is to develop a solid working partnership between horse and rider that makes them both successful. To make certain all clients and horses receive the same high level of attention, care, and hands-on training, they keep the operation at a manageable size. I take a lot of pride in the horses that I train and that come in here, as well as the kids and the people that I train. We're a smaller facility, um, so we only take in basically what we can put out and put out well. I would say the fact that I don't have a lot of assistants that work my horses, like I spend a lot of time on each and every horse that's here. That's my reputation. When it goes out the door or in the show ring, you know, that's my time, my hard work. As part of the extended family, two of Joy and Jim's friends and clients share what they've discovered at WTS and why they too are passionate about the Morgan breed. I got my first horse when I was 12 and it was a big brown Morgan gelding. And when I was 14, I decided I wanted to buy a registered filly, but I wanted an Arab because I'd read all the black stallion books. And that was twice as expensive as a Morgan, and the, Mr. W.T. Carter, who lived down the street, he raised Morgans, so I bought my first Morgan, registered Morgan filly, Gypsy Allen, from him, and paid for her with my allowance, and she became the foundation mare for my Regency bloodlines.
Morgans are a really wonderful breed. I know that my Morgan gelding gave me something to do and fall in love with. And when I got my filly, I spent so much time with her and she was such a marvelous horse. And every Morgan that I've been around has been wonderful in one way or another. I met Joy through my friend Tina Elias who bought a mare from me. And a few years later she comes and she says, Julie, I have someone I want you to meet. And she introduced me to Joy. And this has been the most wonderful experience of my life, having the horses with Joy at Weber Trainee's table. She's honest, she's friendly, she's proficient, she does a great job with the horse. She loves every one of my horses and treats it as well as she does her own. And it's just a great place to be, I love her. I love this breed because they have, Morgan horses have personality. They're all different. They're all individuals with their own special little quirks and their own abilities. And one Morgan may not be able to do everything, but Morgans can do everything, from reining to park to pleasure to help raise a kid. They're just great horses, great breed. All right, Morgan, Morgans are a good breed for youth to become involved in because they're kind, they're responsive, they're intelligent. They're just, they're just great. I never, I didn't really start out with Morgans. I started out with Arabs, um, and but I'd always read the books about Morgans, and I said someday I'm going to have me one, and I did get one. Um, I had to beg, borrow, and steal to raise the $2,500 to buy her. Um, I did so. She was absolutely wonderful. Just fell in love with the breed. Fell in love with the personality, fell in love with just everything about them, the way they look, the way they act, um, like Julie said, the kindness of them, uh, totally different from Arabs in many ways. Um, I still was involved with the Arabs for quite a while until just recently, and now I'm strictly Morgans. They're just the best breed. When I was looking for a trainer, one of the things I was looking for was something that was a smaller facility, somebody who did hands-on. I like that. I like to be involved in seeing what's being done with my horse um, and how it's being handled. And um, Joy, as a trainer, does that. She involves me in every aspect. Um, she wants me around when she's doing things with my horse. Um, she's the kind of person who you just fall in love with right off the bat. She just, you know, wants to do what's best for you, wants to do uh, what's best for the horse, uh, and just lets everybody know that she's there for them. That's what's special about this place is everybody pitches in. Um, if you need something done, if you need a horse wash, you can hand it off to anybody. If you need a horse groomed, if you need a horse saddled, we all participate and um, it, it's, it's fun to do so because you know it's appreciated. You know that to help is, is people want to help and they're willing to do it at any given point of time, no matter what the situation is. One of the things they're most proud of at Weber Training Stables is their youth program, as these youngsters will be the future stewards of the breed. And WTS is a proud host of the American Morgan Horse Association's Winning Colors Youth Program, where youngsters can learn about and get hands-on education about horses and their proper care and management. Winning Colors was sort of something that I wanted to do even when I was in Michigan. I didn't actually get started until I was out here. 
I wanted to do something basically that kids who can't afford to take lessons, somehow they could participate, have hands-on horse activities. So the AMHA sponsors youth groups and so we got them involved in doing an AMHA youth group where we teach the horse mastership program, that whole ordeal. And they can badge, you know, through doing certain activities that they have to receive each badge. We've kind of taken winning colors a little bit farther. Um, you know, Morgans are my love and my primary thing, but I train all breeds. I'm really into horses in general, and I don't want kids that just have Morgans to feel like it's only a place they can come. So we've expanded it to cover all of horse husbandry. The kids learn things that aren't necessarily in there. They've learned how to give shots. They've learned how to worm. We've taught them how to like prepare horses for show. Um, you know, we we have speakers come. We had a jockey come and bring. You know, the whole get up and dress one of the thoroughbreds up, teach them how they sit, how they actually position themselves, do everything, answer questions about being a jockey. We've had, we have an acupuncturist coming to talk to them. Um, we bring in any guest speakers that we can get from different, any kind of basically horse oriented industry, you know, just to basically educate them and teach them. If you want to be in horses, even if you can't be a trainer or you don't want to be a trainer, there's, but you want to have, you know, a future with horses there's some avenue and it doesn't have to necessarily be a Morgan but we do obviously since we love Morgans you know stress and want to build relationships with those and introduce people to and kids to the Morgans as a breed too I mean I would love it if everybody owned one <laughs> but we have a few other breeds of our own as well Joy's husband, Jim, discusses their breeding program, one that focuses on preserving Morgan type, movement, and temperament, and how their ultimate goal is perfection within the Morgan breed. What we're looking for in our breeding program, uh, we, we try to choose the, the sire and the dam for type, confirmation, um, temperament, personality. Um, we, we like to breeds for a specific style of uh, riding, English to English, Western to Western, to try, to try to pass on movement that the, that the sire has. Um, if, we have um, if we have horses that um, have a really nice head and really nice conformation, we like to choose a mare that resembles that to try to perfect what we see in, in each side. We would like to, our ultimate goal with any breeding program is perfection. We want to produce the nicest looking Morgan that, that we possibly can. What's special about Weber Training Stables, I think, is um, clientele that come here instantly become family. We, we treat everyone and hope to be treated like there's a long-term relationship about to happen and is happening with current clientele. The, the clientele go above and beyond. Just We don't label them clients. We don't label them anything other than friends and new family members. We care for their horse as if it's, we, we just got another horse ourselves. We got married in the arena and everyone was here. Anyone who had a horse here or knew us was here involved in the wedding. We had it here because this, this is our family, this is our church. We solve and help each other with problems, but we don't backstab and talk about it. If, a, if someone's having a problem with their horse, we don't let them figure it out, we all figure it out. Joy is the trainer and that's, that's um, unchallenged, but we like to teach each other and educate each other and learn from each other and help Everything, everything that happens here is because it's a group effort. It all gets erected and resolved because of everyone involved. And it's just a really warm and special place to, to be, to wake up, to go to sleep. It, I mean, I get to wake up and look out my door and see this going on every day. I can't imagine that, who isn't jealous of me? You know, I don't have to have a million dollars in the bank, I have this. Discover why so many of their clients over the past two decades have learned that Weber Training Stables is a warm and welcoming place, ready to help anyone of any age improve not only their riding skills, but their relationship with their horse, creating lifelong partnerships 
between horse and owner. They will help you and your horse achieve your dreams. Well, I'm just blessed to be able to do what I really love to do. And not a lot of people can say that. You know, I get to come out here and do what I love to do more than anything in the world every day and get paid for it. How awesome is that? <laughs> The year was 1789, well over two centuries ago in Springfield, Massachusetts. His origins were unknown. Perhaps he came from lines of Welsh Cobb, Arabian, Thoroughbred, or Frisian. No one knew for certain. What was known was that he was a stout colt, a handsome colt, and so he was given the name Figure. No one could have known that this unassuming colt would become the cornerstone and foundation of one of the most outstanding and versatile breeds found today. As the colt developed, he was described as being small, but possessed deep muscling in his quarters and shoulders, straight clean legs, expressive eyes, a well-arched neck, a clean throat latch, and short pricked ears. When Figure was two years old, he was given as payment for a debt to a colonial school teacher named Justin Morgan. He probably intended to make a quick sale of this colt, but as he put him to work, his ability and reputation quickly started to grow, eventually becoming legendary. The story of this magnificent colt and his owner became popularized when Walt Disney produced the film Justin Morgan Had a Horse. And for many Morgan owners today, this film about the life and accomplishments of the Justin Morgan horse was their introduction and beginning of their lifelong love affair with the Morgan breed. Though not as large as the colonial workhorses and not as tall and long-legged as the race horses of his day, figure consistently outperformed all of them. But as legendary as his personal feats were in his time, he became especially recognized and known for his prepotency, his ability to pass his genetic qualities and his attributes to his offspring, so much so that he became the foundation stallion for the breed which bore his owner's name. It was his courage, substance, kind heart, broad versatility, and prepotency which established his permanent place in history and has carried his legacy through 200 years to today and probably well into the future. With the birth of Figure, the Justin Morgan horse well over 200 years ago, the Morgan horse is truly America's first breed, and interestingly enough has contributed greatly to almost every other American light horse breed, while retaining the attributes that made the Justin Morgan horse legendary in his day. Those who know the breed will tell you of its exceptional courage, kind and willing disposition, versatility, and heart. An excellent youth horse, a horse that captures your imagination and leaves hoof prints on your heart.
Although the legendary Justin Morgan horse was born and raised in New England, its popularity has spread throughout North America and around the world. When you talk with owners of the Morgan horse today, one word that consistently comes up in every conversation is the word versatility. For Morgan horses, versatility is the hallmark of the breed, and nowhere is that versatility demonstrated on a large scale than the annual Grand National and World Championship Morgan Horse Show held in Oklahoma City, where each October, approximately 1,400 Morgan horses from all over North America converge to demonstrate the exceptional versatility of the breed in a week-long competition where the public and owners of the breed are treated to a world-class spectacle and demonstration of equine versatility, probably unmatched by any other breed of horse. This annual event, a celebration of the versatility of the Morgan horse, covers just about every equine discipline imaginable, and the Morgan does it all with finesse and accomplishment. No matter what your preferences are for equine riding or driving activity, you're sure to find what you're looking for in the Morgan horse. Let's drop in on this showcase of versatility and let you see for yourself what an amazing and talented breed the Morgan horse is. For breeders, the goal is to breed a better Morgan with each new generation. And so the event begins with the in-hand classes, where the product of several generations of breeding come before the judges for inspection and acknowledgement that they complement and exemplify the breed standard and exhibit correct movement when shown on a lead. The Morgan's grace and beauty lends itself well to all forms of equitation and we'll spend a few minutes with each discipline, including English pleasure, hunt seat, hunter pleasure, park saddle, and more. You'll quickly appreciate what an exemplary riding horse and saddle companion the Morgan horse is.
Reining competition, once thought the domain of quarter horses and other western breeds, is a sport in which the Morgan is now seen as a very viable and competitive athlete. Its willingness to please, athleticism, stamina, calm demeanor and competitive heart are opening eyes in the world of reining competition. Reining is one of the fastest growing equine sports today and more and more people are learning about the excitement found in reining competitions where horse and rider perform exacting riding patterns, spins, lead changes, and the always exciting sliding stops. It takes an athletic, capable horse for reining competition, and the Morgan more than exceeds the requirements needed for this exacting sport. This week-long celebration of the versatility of the Morgan breed is not limited to just Morgan owners as U.S. Equestrian Federation CEO John Long and Olympic gold medalist and USEF President David O'Connor joined the festivities. David joined in the week's activities and was given the opportunity to ride two exceptional Morgans, HVK Pavarotti and Santa Fe Renegade. And later, they were presented to an appreciative audience in the Coliseum, driven behind a stunning Morgan driving pair, with world champion competitor Gene Brown at the reins. Western pleasure has always been a popular form of riding, and typically, Western breeds come to mind when you think Western. But the Morgan horse is an exceptional Western pleasure companion, as you'll see here. The Morgan horse is also an exceptional trail horse, as you'll see in both these Western and English trail horse classes. A solid trail horse is one that knows where its feet are at all times, is unflappable, navigates hazards, can maneuver in tight spaces, is sensible, and thinks its way through situations rather than reacting to them. A solid trail horse is an invaluable companion, and as you see here, the Morgan is well suited for this activity. Morgan is an athletic horse with incredible stamina. Morgans possess a solid temperament suitable for the demands of jumping and carry their rider with ease over jumps of significant height. 
leaving the ground and soaring over obstacles with tremendous natural ability. This is a breed that impacts people's lives and lifestyles. It bonds with kids, families, people of any age, and for many, the Morgan has been a part of their family for decades. Owners will tell you the Morgan has an ability to sense their rider, a competitive sport horse that will turn it on for competition, will take care of a child on its back as if it were its own. They have a remarkable ability to adapt to their handler and rider. The American Morgan Horse Association has a strong youth program, recognizing that the youngsters of today will be the stewards of the breed tomorrow. The expressions on the youngsters' faces and seeing how these Morgans take care of their riders speaks volumes about the lifelong bonds these kids and their horses will have. I think the Morgan is the best breed because they are the most versatile horse I've ever seen. They do everything, everything, any discipline, Morgan can do it and they excel at every single one that they try and no other horse can do that. The Morgan Horse Association is awesome and they really take care of the youth um, and it's great because the youth are definitely the future of our breed. So. The youth program not only fosters equestrian skills, but citizenship and life skills as well. Each year, one exceptional youth member is chosen as Youth of the Year, receiving a one-month trip to the country of their choice to broaden their equine education and skill set. And one of the most popular events of the week, which highlights the bond between kids and their Morgan horses, is the lead line class. One only has to look at these young riders and their Morgans to know these are bonds and memories, which will last a lifetime. Is there any doubt that Morgans and kids are a match made in heaven? One thing you're sure to notice is that this is a breed for all ages of equestrian enthusiast. Whether you're 6 or 60, there's a Morgan horse and activity for you. And if you thought the Morgan horse was an exceptional riding horse, well, that's just the half of it. The Morgan is also an exceptional and proven driving horse, making tremendous inroads into the sport of combined driving events, a three-phase competition consisting of dressage, a marathon course with hazards, and a precision timed cones course. Morgans excel in pleasure driving, park harness, carriage driving, and the always exciting and crowd-pleasing roadster to bike competitions. The versatility of the Morgan as a driving horse seems to have no limitations.
owners will tell you, you cannot wear a Morgan out. Their stamina is incredible. When other breeds are wearing out, the Morgan is just warm enough. Morgans like having a job and enjoy the company of people. The Morgan horse is a breed with a rich history and exceptional heritage. It has evolved through more than 200 years of commercial and pleasure use, but has amazingly retained the inherent characteristics that made it legendary in the late 1700s, and today represents one of the most versatile breeds of horses on the planet. Whether you're looking for a trail or pleasure riding companion and friend, a pleasure driving or competitive sport horse, or looking for a competitive show horse, you'll find all of these attributes and suitability in the Morgan horse. Discover the excitement. Discover your dream horse. Discover the Morgan, America's first breed. To begin your journey with the Morgan breed, ask someone who owns a Morgan or contact your local Morgan Horse Club. To gaze into the eyes of a Morgan Horse is to see a legend. I'm John May, this is my wife Susan May. Our farm is located near Justin, Texas, uh, north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We built this facility and farm, uh, we started back in 1983, and it's been a work in progress ever since. I think our operation here is a little unique. We're surrounded by um, farms that produce crops as well as cattle. Uh, but we're one of the few horse operations in this particular area of this size and scope. We're primarily Morgan horse uh, breed. Uh, we occasionally get other breeds in for training, but primarily our focus for breeding and training and performance and competition uh, revolves around the Morgan horse. We created the name Aswin Morgan Horse Farm. Um, from, uh, it actually has its origin uh, in Wales. My ancestors came over from Wales, and uh, so we have a strong bond and strong affinity for it. Aswin is a Celtic word which means magical, 
or to conjure up as if by magic. Uh, the Morgan in the Aswin Morgan horse farm is actually a family name. My middle name is Morgan and uh, it's actually Aswin Morgan Horse Farm. If we raised Appaloosas, it would probably be Aswin Morgan Appaloosa Farm. Uh, it's just pure coincidence that uh, um, Morgan is also the breed that we're affiliated with. Um, yeah, <laughs> Oddly enough, uh, we wind up near a town called Justin. Uh, Justin Morgan was the founder of the breed, and at one time we thought we might call it Justin Morgans, but we thought that might be a little bit over the top. We typically get up early and uh, there's horses to feed and uh, stalls to take care of and uh, horses to, to exercise and work and turn out. Um, Sue said we have 13 horses here with the other horses that are in for training. I think we have 33 or 34, uh, last nose count. Uh, so it's a busy place. There's no shortage of things to do and uh, the place pretty much uh, hops about 15 hours a day. What we have here is a small group of uh, dedicated people who um, put out the effort of many more people uh, to get done what needs to be done. We have a good dedicated crew here. I used to be a quarter horse individual uh, and I lived in Pennsylvania. I had a farm in Pennsylvania and my neighbor uh, used to bale hay and occasionally I'd help him. Uh, he used to bale hay for a Morgan breeder south of Pittsburgh, uh, Renan Camp Farms. Uh, and he bought a young filly from them and I was kind of enamored of this filly and um, Mr. Rennenkamp called me up the next year and he said, John, are you ready for your first Morgan? And I said, Bill, I said, I'm going to get a Morgan someday, I said, but timing's not good right now. And he said, he said to me, he said, John, he said, I'm pulling my hair out. He said, I had five mares bred and I got five colts this year. He said, I want to just move them out. He said, take your pick, $175. I couldn't write a check fast enough before he changed his mind or he realized what he had said. And uh, I had a check written to him and I picked this one young, uh, up-headed, bright, brassy looking foal and I said, I'll take that one with me. And uh, so we took him home and uh, over the years he just um, endeared me to the breed. He had so much heart, so much willingness to please. Uh, an excellent companion. His name is uh, Renika Rubicon. Uh, we call him Chip, is his barn name. But he's just as uh, spry and uh, friendly and uh, um, willing to please as uh, any horse we've ever had. Um, anyway, uh, I had him at a stable in Denton, Texas when I moved here, and uh, that's where I met Sue. But uh, she fell in love with my horse. And I, I contend to this day that that's why she married me, and she'll freely admit that she married me for my horse. Uh, so I don't know what happens when he goes, but uh, I'm making sure he has, lives a long life and, uh, <laughs> and keep him around as long as we can. Uh, but we had Chip and we had a couple other quarter horses, and uh, he just, uh, like I said, he endeared us to the breed, and we decided when we were going to focus on a particular breed and start a program that it was going to be Morgan's. Uh, John and I, um, after we were married, we uh, built a log home together and we had Chip with us at that time. And we decided that we wanted to uh, primarily just have uh, Morgan horses. And uh, we started looking for a Morgan stallion that really looked like Justin Morgan. So we came across a picture in the Morgan Horse magazine of uh, our stallion's daddy, uh, Meredith Billy Rubin, and um, we called the lady up who owned him, and she said she had a little stud colt there, and we flew all the way to Washington State to see this stud colt, and this stud colt is our main breeding stallion here, uh, Madrona Rubicon. Uh, Madrona Rubicon, who we call Mickey, uh, around the barn here. Uh, is our lead stallion and uh, he's done exceptionally well in competition and I think he exemplifies some of the best characteristics of original Morgan type. Um, and to validate that uh, position he's now won seven Justin Morgan standard class titles in class A competition. Uh, that's a class whereby the uh, the winner of that class is selected by 
their uh, resemblance to what they believe the original Justin Morgan horse uh, looked like, and uh, he's with short back, uh, very upheaded, crested neck, and so forth. This year he goes for his eighth and his ninth uh, win in competition for that. So probably by the time this film comes out, he'll have racked up nine wins in the Justin Morgan Standard class, and uh, and we're very proud of that. It's uh, an acknowledgement by the judges that he uh, reflects original Morgan type, and that's that is the basis for our breeding program that Sue and I have developed. Mickey has more heart and willingness to please. He's a companion, he's a friend, he's a true competitor. He understands the game. Uh, we've taken him to a number of combined driving classes. Uh, he's won his division three times already and uh, he particularly enjoys marathon. We just kind of hang along for the ride uh, in marathon, but uh, he gets his head into the game and he understands the objective. And um, you know, it's fun to work with a horse uh, that's into the competition and enjoys it as much as we do. Yeah, we were twice blessed to uh, have a mare uh, named Joni. Her registered name is TFM Joan de Arc and she was sired by a Morgan Stallion named John Ethan Ashbrook and out of a mare called Shamrock Amazing Grace. Joni we raised from a baby and uh, she turned out to be an outstanding carriage horse and uh, a very big competitive heart on her. Uh, two years ago we had Mickey signed up for a combined driving event down near Houston called Foggy Bottom and a week prior to the event he came up lame and the vet said he needed about six weeks of rest so with only four days between that and uh, the uh, combined driving event we substituted Joni and she went in and won her division and uh, she's got that much heart and uh, it was a, a rainy muddy wet course but uh, she slogged through it and just persevered like a champion she's got more heart than uh, just about any um, other mare that I've ever had. Well, Gene Brown never warned me how addictive carriage driving was going to be. We started off in singles, then we got the bug to do pairs. Uh, once you get the bug to do pairs and you see how much fun you're having there, you start thinking about a four in hand, which is four horses uh, hitched as a team. Uh, Joni and Sarah uh, kind of have the position now for the wheelers, which are the ones which work in the back, and we needed a pair of leaders, the horses which work out in front. Uh, after a long, exhaustive search, we uh, finally found Sauntry Muffin and Sauntry Jedediah, a pair of four-year-old half-sibling Morgans, uh, who have a big step, are very flashy, and uh, uh, although they're young and just four, they've come a long way in a very short period of time. We're working them up now uh, as a pair, and uh, after Joni has her foal and Sarah has her foal, we hope to pull them all together next year. And our expectation is that we would show uh, Muffin, Jed, uh, Joni, and Sarah, uh, Sarah Nada, uh, as a foreign hand at Nationals in the year 2003. When you have uh, two horses working in a pair, uh, the most important thing is their way of going, not necessarily how they look or their color, uh, but their way of going. They need to work together, they need to share the load, um, that each horse is contributing to, uh, to the pulling of the carriage, uh, and they need to develop a cadence together. Um, we spend a lot of time walking, we spend a lot of time trotting uh, to build that cadence and togetherness and that's uh, when they start working together as a pair, uh, that's when the magic begins. I think that the carriage driving experience has been good for John and I because we do this together and uh, I think that's been a real asset for us. Uh, we can get out and do these things together and uh, work with our horses and be a team together and that's real important to both of us. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous couple sport and uh, you need you need more than one hand to participate in carriage driving but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun when you uh, create a team of uh, um, two people as well you know and the horses and that's just uh, everybody working together for a common goal.
Okay, I'm Gene Brown of uh, Training Resources. That's a, a horse training facility that uh, we have here in Justin. And Sonia's my wife, and uh, uh, she's kind of the head jockey around here. And uh, we do show horses. We kind of have four aspects to our business. We do show horses. Uh, a quarter of what we do is lessons, and uh, we do clinics, some at the farm. We travel and do clinics. The third quarter is uh, working with uh, you know, carriage driving horses, which are can be any breed, and it's more of a discipline-oriented thing. And the fourth quarter is uh, we like to work with individuals and their horses that uh, have to do with recreation and, and learning to be a better horseman. Kathy Ferguson was one of those ladies that brought us a horse and said, look, I don't want to show. Uh, I had a horse when I was a kid and I've always wanted to have a horse again and uh, I'm at a point in my life where I can do that. That's not uncommon. There are a lot of women that have that dream and uh, they have it when they're a kid and they come back to it at some point. I said, why don't you just bring your horse out here and let's get together and see if we can't have some fun. Then Kathy came out and committed, which the individual has to do, to an instruction program to learn about teaming up with this horse. And Kathy's just taking lessons, getting dialed in and getting to be a better horseman herself. And the horse is improving too in his skills. Are you not releasing your outside rein quite enough? There you go. Kathy doesn't care about winning any horse show. She cares about getting together with her horse. She loves them. And, uh, and that horse loves her too. And it's just been great to see them come together. I'm fourth generation. My dad did it and my granddad did it. And I had two great granddads that were uh, circuit ministers. And they were both horse traders and uh, uh, kind of had their roots in the Tennessee area. And that's where my kind of my heritage came from. So the Morgan breed has really been good to us over the years. We've had a lot of success in the show ring and we've had a lot of success with, with Morgan horses. Well, the way we got started with the Aswin Morgan farm was if you start back away, Sonia and I, when we were married, uh, started into training horses together. And uh, she actually was at that point in her life where she wanted to do this. So she came to me and said, I need help with a business plan. Well, our business plan got to be a life plan. <laughs> Carter Creek's Bella De La Hoya is her name, call her Belle. Bell is a representative of a showing division that we call In Hand. And uh, from the In Hand classes, uh, exhibitors and breeders come to study the different sexes of horses and compare mares with mares and different age groups and so on. It's about breeding. And if you can get a horse into that division that is pretty, typey, has good confirmation, is athletic, uh, and get in the winter circle, it helps that breeder's breeding program because uh, those are important classes to breeder. Uh, she's a five-year-old now, and she's kind of got some confidence in herself and got some strength, and she's uh, smooth. It's pretty tough winning one of those regional championships in hand, but... It was kind of Bella's day that day, and she stepped up and came out of there with the Grand Champion Mare Award. And there's only 10 regional champion mares in America every year. So her first time out with us, she won one of those, and we're pretty proud of her. Uh, Denbury Silver Symphony is uh, a mare that's uh, owned by Denbury Farms, uh, Chuck and Donna Detman in Noakesville, Virginia. They bred this mare as a result of a, a, a very good breeding program that they've had there for uh, pretty close to 15 years. So this little mare, we started when she was a junior horse. She's done pretty well in hand in her lifetime, and she, uh, she ended up reserve five and older mare at Grand National year before last, which is awful hard to do. This year, we decided to step her up to Park Saddle and have just a little more fun with her. And, 
she's kind of been game for it. And Julie Wren's riding her, and Julie grew up in Sonia's lesson program and has an uh, English pleasure horse with us now. And uh, the Detmans are retiring, going out of the horse business, and have this mare and some others for sale. And so uh, she's on the docket to show and sell, but we're going to have some fun in the meantime. Uh, Denbury Justice Revived, or Rev as we call him, is a five-year-old gelding, and uh, we bought him as a speculation horse from Denbury Farms, who is a client of ours from Virginia, and uh, we bought him when he was a coming two-year-old. Uh, we never started showing this horse till he was a four-year-old, but uh, very heavily. Showed him when he was young in hand, and he did very well. He's, I think five-year-old's a tough year. A horse is just past junior, and he's in there competing against horses that uh, have been senior horses for 10 years and uh, very seasoned. And uh, Rev isn't quite dropped into the groove yet, but we went to a regional championship show at uh, Wichita, the Wheat State Regional, and uh, showed him six trips here about two weeks ago. And uh, he was second five times and first once, so he's on his way. Freddie Smith. I have his Morgans down in Waycross, Georgia. Um, I'm a client of uh, Training Resources with Gene, Brown, Gene, Gene and Sonia Brown in Justin, Texas. I really got into the horse business as, a, as something of relaxation and of something that I enjoy. I love the old statement that says the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a man. And I have found that absolutely uh, uh, truthful for me. Not only is Jean and Sonia Brown personal friends, but I went beyond that in selecting a trainer for my horses. I came to meet them through some mutual friends. I think at a, con at a convention one year, uh, we met personally and visited for a while and, and kind of really hit it off. So um, I'm glad to have Justin here and he's doing well. And um, I, I'm excited about Gene working with him and bringing him along and uh, seeing what his potential can be. Gene Brown is a very um, accessible as a trainer. Um, when you have a horse in the care of a trainer, uh, you certainly want at times to speak to the trainer, especially if you're hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So I have found uh, Gene to be very accessible and I appreciated that uh, because I felt that, that that meant a great deal in the success that I was trying to accomplish in the training. Secondly, not only is he accessible, but Gene Brown knows uh, what he's doing. You can rest assured that if you place your horse in his hands and you talk about his abilities, the horses that is, Gene can bring that horse along to his ultimate potential. His Sir Justin, uh, he was born in our, our place in, um, in Waycross, Georgia. I have his mother in my stables, and uh, she's a bay as well. Uh, very athletic, and he's three years old. Uh, he's at training resources for uh, the benefit of harness work. I want to drive him. And also for Jean and Sonia to... Uh, analyze him to see where, where his talents lie. When Freddie Smith called us about this horse, we burned up a lot of telephone time talking about this, and we'd meet at different events and talk about it, and 
because uh, promoting a breeding horse, promoting a stallion in our breed today is, uh, is a serious and difficult project. You have to start young. <clears throat> you have to start with the right horse. Uh, you've got to be committed to the long haul. And uh, it takes a special kind of horse to do that. So Freddie called one day and he said, well, I think I'm ready to make the jump and bring that colt to you. And I said, okay, bring him down here and we'll get started and see what we've got. He kind of, he didn't just step off that trailer. He came out of there like he meant business. <laughs> and... Uh, we kind of got him comfortable and put him in the stall, and uh, next morning, Freddie came out from the motel, and we put him in the round pen, worked with him a little bit, and Freddie's kind of guy that isn't afraid to ask you, what do you think, how's he doing? What do you think he'll make anything? And that's kind of the process that, that, that you've got to go through. Oh, I, I think he's more, really, than what I anticipated. I think Sir Justin has given us... Uh, some real pluses uh, to what I was expecting. Um, I think one thing is going to be a size. I, I think he's going to be a good 15, 15 1, uh, 15 2, which is a good size Morgan, uh, which fits right into the Morgan standard. I like his confirmation. I, I think that he is put together well. Uh, he looks like a Morgan. Uh, He's got the big eye, he's, he's got the beautiful head. He has a, a beautiful uh, top line as he stands in hand. Um, a wonderful, beautiful neck. Um, there's not a, a, a white spot on him. He's a total, a total bay, a perfect bay. He has an unusual, beautiful color that glows. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed at the color that he is. He's got that full mane, that full tail. He's smart as a whip. Um, the movement of, of Justin, uh, to me, is uh, is a beautiful is a beautiful sight. I love to stand and watch him trot. I, I think he's, he's got that beautiful extended trot that uh, uh, that I certainly would think would fit well in harness and 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 hopefully that at three years of age, as we have the opportunity of breeding him, hopefully he'll be able to, to pass on some of these wonderful traits that I think he has. If you turn a horse loose in what we call putting him at liberty, and you just watch this horse take out over a, an outside arena, as, as you can see Justin doing in, the, in this video, uh, you're going to have a pretty good idea of just what this horse brings to the ball game. And when you see the horse flag that tail up over his back and raise his head up and set those ears up there and look two or three counties away and trot about level going down through there doing it, well, it gives you something to, to kind of aspire to. I've been in the horse world long enough to know there's a lot of interesting and wonderful stallions out there in the world, and I would not want to belittle any of them. But I am excited about the one I have. And I think that, uh, that he has uh, the possibility. He's three. There's a lot of development yet to be done. But um, as a breeding stallion, as well as a driver and, and an athletic horse, that uh, I think he has a, a great deal to contribute uh, to the Morgan world. We sincerely enjoy visitors. Uh, we're only 40 minutes away from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. And um, the horses always enjoy visitors. Uh, we enjoy uh, showing people what our horses do. Uh, the carriages have always been fascinating to visitors, and uh, we're uh, more than happy to share our experience in our farm here with uh, anybody who's interested in learning more about the Morgan breed uh, or carriage driving. <music>
the American Morgan Horse Association created a national event entitled Celebrate the Morgan, where local and regional Morgan Horse Club affiliates demonstrate and educate the public as to the magnificent legacy and extreme versatility of this breed. With a goal of creating both new interest and new awareness of this special and versatile breed, the Morgan Horse Club of Texas, along with Morgan owners from Oklahoma, proudly displayed for the public's pleasure and education one of the finest Celebrate the Morgan presentations found anywhere in North America. Join us now as we demonstrate the exceptional heart, willingness to please, and versatility that are the hallmarks of the Morgan Horse, America's first breed. This annual event, a celebration of the versatility of the Morgan Horse, covers just about every equine discipline imaginable, and the Morgan does it all with finesse and accomplishment. No matter what your preferences are for equine riding or driving activity, you're sure to find what you're looking for in the Morgan Horse. Let's drop in on this showcase of versatility and let you see for yourself what an amazing and talented breed the Morgan Horse is. The Morgan's grace and beauty lends itself well to all forms of equitation and we'll spend a few minutes with each discipline, including English pleasure, hunt seat, hunter pleasure, and more. You'll quickly appreciate what an exemplary riding horse and saddle companion the Morgan horse is. This is a breed that impacts people's lives and lifestyles. It bonds with kids, families, people of any age, and for many, the Morgan has been a part of their family for decades. Owners will tell you the Morgan has an ability to sense their rider, a competitive sport horse that will turn it on for competition, will take care of a child on its back as if it were its own. They have a remarkable ability to adapt to their handler and rider. With the birth of figure, the Justin Morgan horse well over 200 years ago, the Morgan horse is truly America's first breed, and interestingly enough has contributed greatly to almost every other American light horse breed, while retaining the attributes that made the Justin Morgan horse legendary in his day. Those who know the breed will tell you of its exceptional courage, kind and willing disposition, versatility, and heart. An excellent youth horse, a horse that captures your imagination and leaves hoof prints on your heart. Although the legendary Justin Morgan horse was born and raised in New England, its popularity has spread throughout North America and around the world. When you talk with owners of the Morgan horse today, one word that consistently comes up in every conversation is the word versatility. For Morgan horses, versatility is the hallmark of the breed.
Reining competition, once thought the domain of quarter horses and other western breeds, is a sport in which the Morgan is now seen as a very viable and competitive athlete. Its willingness to please, athleticism, stamina, calm demeanor, and competitive heart are opening eyes in the world of reining competition. Reining is one of the fastest growing equine sports today, and more and more people are learning about the excitement found in reining competitions, where horse and rider perform exacting riding patterns, spins, lead changes, and the always exciting sliding stops. It takes an athletic, capable horse for reining competition, and the Morgan more than exceeds the requirements needed for this exacting sport. Dressage, a French term meaning training, is a path and destination of competitive horse training, with competitions held at all levels from amateur to the Olympics. Its fundamental purpose is to develop, through standardized progressive training methods, a horse's natural athletic ability and willingness to perform, thereby maximizing its potential as a riding horse. At the peak of a dressage horse's gymnastic development, it can smoothly respond to a skilled rider's minimal aids by performing the requested movement while remaining relaxed and appearing effortless, and attendees were presented with several Morgan horses accomplished in dressage. Although the Morgan is not a color breed, registered Morgans come in a variety of colors, although they are most commonly bay, black, and chestnut. Less common colors include gray, palomino, roan, cremello, perlino, smoky cream, smoky black, silver dapple, sabino, frame and splash overo, dun, and buckskin. Several excellent examples were presented to the delight of the crowd. as a strong youth program, recognizing that the youngsters of today will be the stewards of the breed tomorrow. 
The expressions on the youngsters' faces and seeing how these Morgans take care of their riders speaks volumes about the lifelong bonds these kids and their horses will have. The youth program not only fosters equestrian skills, but citizenship and life skills as well. and one of the most popular events of the week, which highlights the bond between kids and their Morgan horses, is the lead line class. One only has to look at these young riders and their Morgans to know these are bonds and memories which will last a lifetime. Is there any doubt that Morgans and kids are a match made in heaven? Western pleasure has always been a popular form of riding, and typically, Western breeds come to mind when you think Western. But the Morgan horse is an exceptional Western pleasure companion as you'll see here. The Morgan horse is also an exceptional trail horse. A solid trail horse is one that knows where its feet are at all times, is unflappable, navigates hazards, can maneuver in tight spaces, is sensible, and thinks its way through situations rather than reacting to them. A solid trail horse is an invaluable companion, and as you see here, the Morgan is well suited for this activity. Of course, even the best of trail horses may want a snack every now and then. The Morgan is an athletic horse with incredible stamina. Morgans possess a solid temperament suitable for the demands of jumping and carry their rider with ease over jumps of significant height, leaving the ground and soaring over obstacles with tremendous natural ability. Yeah. 
For breeders, the goal is to breed a better Morgan with each new generation. The in-hand classes, where the product of several generations of breeding come for inspection and acknowledgement that they complement and exemplify the breed standard and exhibit correct movement when shown on a lead. One thing you're sure to notice is that this is a breed for all ages of equestrian enthusiasts. Whether you're 6 or 60, there's a Morgan horse and activity for you. And if you thought the Morgan horse was an exceptional riding horse, well, that's just the half of it. The Morgan is also an exceptional and proven driving horse, making tremendous inroads into the sport of combined driving events, a three-phase competition consisting of dressage, a marathon course with hazards, and a precision timed cones course. Morgans excel in pleasure driving, park harness, carriage driving. The versatility of the Morgan as a driving horse seems to have no limitations. Owners will tell you, you cannot wear a Morgan out. Their stamina is incredible. When other breeds are wearing out, the Morgan is just warm enough. Morgans like having a job and enjoy the company of people. The Morgan horse is a breed with a rich history and exceptional heritage. It has evolved through more than 200 years of commercial and pleasure use, but has amazingly retained the inherent characteristics that made it legendary in the late 1700s, and today represents one of the most versatile breeds of horses on the planet. Whether you're looking for a trail or pleasure riding companion and friend, a pleasure driving or competitive sport horse, or looking for a competitive show horse, you'll find all of these attributes and suitability in the Morgan horse. To begin your journey with the Morgan breed, ask someone who owns a Morgan, or contact your local Morgan horse club, or always feel free to contact the American Morgan Horse Association. To gaze into the eyes of a Morgan horse, is to see a legend. Discover the excitement, 
Discover your dream horse. Discover the Morgan, America's first breed. Welcome to Drummond Island, located in the Upper Peninsula region of Michigan. This is the story of a chestnut Morgan horse named Clifford. Clifford of Drummond Island, owned and loved by Nancy Bailey. Their story, experiences, and adventures have been compiled into a book by Nancy and detail one of the most extraordinary relationships one could imagine between a person and their horse. But Clifford is not just any horse. He's a Morgan. Horses can change your life, but many times the most special equine relationships are not planned. And Clifford's story was no exception. Had it not been for the unfortunate set of circumstances with Nancy's first love, a beautiful and spirited Morgan mare named Sherilyn, the story of Clifford might never have been written. Nancy's first Morgan mare truly embraced her vision and expectations of the classic Morgan horse, the image of the original Justin Morgan horse named Figure. But sadly, the beautiful mare, Sherilyn, had to be laid to rest only eight weeks after Nancy had acquired her. To fill the deep emotional hoof prints left in her heart by this wonderful mare, Nancy went an entirely different direction, acquiring a young two-year-old chestnut colt. He would not have been her original preference, but she was concerned her expectations would be much too high if she acquired another mare or filly. <laughs> So, a young chestnut colt, nicknamed Buckets, became the Morgan to fill the void created by the loss of Sherilyn. Interestingly enough, Nancy saw many of the same mannerisms and traits in Buckets that she knew in her great uncle Clifford. And it didn't take long for this chestnut Morgan, whose registered name is actually Carrie B. Proud, to become Clifford. That's Clifford of Drummond Island. Nancy discovered that the clicker training that worked so well for her canine friends also worked well when training Clifford. And Clifford now has an extensive repertoire of activities he and Nancy share, including playing soccer and fetching cones. I've been teaching him to play soccer too, but I haven't brought his ball with me. Are you a good boy? Huh? Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Yes. Yes? Are you good all the time? No. 
right. See, he doesn't get clicked for everything and he doesn't get treats for everything because he's, he's well established in these behaviors enough to know what he's supposed to do. And it just keeps a little, things a little bit more interesting for him. Okay, get ready. For this, he's supposed to stand with his head down and his ears up and wait. Take off with enthusiasm. Get up. And bring it back quickly. Okay, quickly. And put it in my hand. Good boy. It wasn't long afterwards that a companion mare for Clifford came into their lives when Nancy acquired Carrie Eratude, or Trudy as they call her. Trudy, a three-year-old Morgan mare and a half-sister to Clifford, was a mare that Nancy had long been admiring, and now finally she was available. A perfect pasture mate and beach buddy for Clifford. For Nancy and Clifford, the absolute best day of the entire year is the 4th of July on Drummond Island, located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Nancy and her friends get Clifford groomed and polished for the 4th of July parade on Drummond Island. I was in tradition's mood that day. I wouldn't ride him bareback. And then he started making him trot. And I was in front of Jordy. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Drive, driving down the road. Ah, it's Mr. Red! <laughs> The town comes alive with the annual parade in which Nancy, Clifford, and several of her friends are a regular feature. The entire island community comes out to celebrate this annual summer event. Friends and neighbors, two-legged and four-legged, all turn out to celebrate our country's independence. Seems like the whole island turns out for this annual parade. Kids, and kids at heart, line the parade route to get a glimpse of Nancy and Clifford as they pass down the streets of Drummond Island. There's Clifford right there. There's Clifford the horse. He's kind of famous around these parts. Mostly because a lot of people know my dad, and my dad is very well known and loved around the island, so he's kind of associated with him. After delighting the townspeople, Clifford returns home to Truth and gets down to some much deserved power grazing for a job well done. Their secluded vacation site in the tall woods of Drummond Island is the perfect place for family, friends, and critters to while away a sunny July afternoon and to swap stories and recollections of Clifford's antics. I'm Nancy Bailey. This is Clifford. His real name, his registered name is Carrie B. Proud. 
and he's kind of known around these parts as Clifford of Drummond Island. Welcome to Drummond Island. That back there is his half-sister, Carrie Eritude, known to us as Trudy. And these are Morgan horses. And I've been bringing them up here for the past seven years, um, every summer. And we just really have fun in the woods and on the beach and enjoy our time here. And the reason I picked uh, Morgan horses was because they had a reputation for versatility, but they've surprised me with a few characteristics that I didn't expect out of a horse, such as sense of humor. And Clifford, in fact, has provided enough material where um, I started keeping a journal about my summers up here, and I started sending stories about him excerpts from the journal to the Morgan list on the internet and they became the stories became so popular that people started asking when is the book coming out so then I thought that was a good idea so it just after eventually after seven years became a book so when they started asking about when the book was coming out then I compiled the stories into seven chap uh, seven chapters seven years worth of chapters I think there's about 36 chapters in the book actually about the lifestyle here on Drummond Island and what it's been like living with Clifford and Trudy and the dogs and um, what it's like to be the owner of a Morgan horse. And the name of the book is called Clifford of Drummond Island and it's done really well in Morgan circles. And I'm currently working on a sequel because there's just so many more stories to tell. So, but the thing that surprises me that surprised me about the Morgan was their sense of humor and the character. Uh, um, I think character is a good word to sum up the Morgan temperament because they have a great work ethic and they're just really a lot of fun. I've had a great time owning a Morgan and I don't think I'll ever want or need any other kind of horse. Yeah, Clifford was a it's a good horse to have around because he's friendly. He even fell asleep on my head one time. And uh, he was inquisitive. We were putting up the gazebo over there, dug a hole, had moved the, the post a little bit. My brother and I was working down there with a oversized spoon. And he had to come over there and put his nose in there and get down and see what we were doing. And of course, uh, that's the type of a horse he is. A good one. Uh, I've always been afraid of horses. And I had a hard time getting going to put a clipper. And one day he came up to me and wanted to kiss me with his, turned his lips back and he's got these yellow teeth. So I told her she's got to get some pets with him and start brushing his teeth. Oh, those workmen had a heck of a time hanging on to their gloves. That horse was running off with them. He'd fling them up over his head. It was the cutest darn thing. But that, that workman, every time he turned around to see that horse running off with his gloves, he finally got fed up and went and grabbed that horse and tied him up so he could get his work done. Because Clifford is a really social horse, and there were people up on the deck hanging out and having a barbecue, kind of like today. And he wanted to be where all the people were, and I wanted to take him for a ride. So he was grudgingly walking up the road. I would get him to trot every once in a while. And then we, when we got to the farm, which is about a quarter mile away or so, turned around and began galloping back I thought, well, this is pretty cool because then I'm going to go flying past the camper and wave to everybody, hey, look at me ride, you know. I got to the first corner of the driveway and I expected to go straight and I looked up and waved at everybody and thinking that the horse is going to continue going straight. Clifford makes a left-hand turn. I fell off. He comes up here and stops by the by the deck and he's like, okay, I'm here. Let's start the festivities. <laughs> yeah. And so you rode Clifford in the parade. Yeah, I did. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and I have my um, my country style clothes on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Just like uh, Eva McIntyre. Right. Yeah. Or John Michael Montgomery. John Michael Montgomery. Yeah.
one of the last places on earth that is just exactly as it was uh, about 200 years ago. Um, my great grandfather was the second white man to sail in here and settle on Drummond Island. This is where he landed, this is where he settled, and he set up seven lumber camps around the island. Now about probably one third of the people who grow up on this island at least are related to George Warren Bailey and Cornelia Edgerton Bailey who were the two white pioneers that came here and this is where they landed. And I think this place in my mind is a historical landmark. It's one of my favorite places ever in the world. I wanted everybody to see this place as I've known and loved it for the past years of my life. Thanks. Now let's play. That horse is one in a million. After we hung up, I thought about what he said. One in a million. That was a long way from good for nothing. I realized that over the time he had spent with us, Clifford had proven to be many things. A trail horse, a rescuer, a babysitter, a parade horse, a practical joker, an ambassador, a trick horse, an explorer, a fisherman, a best friend. And while I have learned a great deal from horses during my time with them, perhaps the most important is this. It is not what you achieve in life that matters. It is not the ribbons you win, nor your physical stature, nor the people you impress, nor the titles you earn. You can have all these things, and you can still be missing something. In the end, the one thing that truly matters is what is in your heart.